We're back with more Five Nights at Freddy's, Billy! It's I'm time so excited. For the rise of F. Hello, uh, Internet! Welcome to awesome. Game Theory, and officially page uh, seven of the FNAF timeline know, script. Sound... I'm so terrible. done with this. I'm so terrible. done with this. I'm just so done with this. I guess it should come down just next week. Mm. No, don't. We don't have the seats yet. <laughs> All right, three, two, one. What's up, Billy? It's time for more Game Theory. Hello, game Internet. Theory. Welcome to Game Five Theory, and three. officially page seven of the FNAF timeline script. Damn. Last time we covered All the right. origins of Freddy's. We talked about William Afton's childhood dream project of making Billy! a singing bear come to life, <laughs> and the infuriating moment that his dream is copied by a rival restaurant franchise looking Dude, to steal away his success. The I merger of the two franchises results in William so meeting Henry, a brilliant designer with a knack for robotics. Working together, jealous. they make Fred Bears flourish, spawning popular Saturday morning cartoon shows, toy okay, lines, and like now we're actually under the Fazbear the name. When last we left him, yeah. Afton yeah. was thriving. The world of robotics opening his eyes to new and exciting ways of bringing characters to life. Bringing things to life, yeah, that was his core driving force, He's his him. passion. Yeah. And it was this very passion that would mutate, totally twist, and AI, morph Jeff, from here on out in the story. Because with life, there is inevitably death something that Afton would become intimately familiar with. But before Matthew Afton Lillard, acquaints no. himself with death, I want you to take some time to acquaint yourself with our newest channel. Guys, this is oh, a damn. huge moment for well, us theorists. For the last out. decade, we've had this four-player controller icon, and now we finally fill Nine in the ago. final Nine missing piece. Okay. Get ready for the rollout of our newest theorist channel. Drum roll, please. Drum theory. Style theory. <laughs> We're looking at the theory. science, That's math, awesome, psychology, actually. history, and mystery of the way you look, your clothing, fashion trends, hygiene, and makeup. Hey, now, I know that theorizing about style I've never might sound weird at that, first, but hear me it. out. I grew up not understanding style or fashion at all. Admittedly, I was a bit of a hot mess. Blissfully ignorant of the impact that style has over your life and how the world treats you. But over time, by educating myself on the ins and outs of the fashion industry, I was better able to achieve my true self and find my own sense of personal style. And that right there, that builds confidence. The way that you look directly affects the way that you feel and corsets, the way that other people yeah, treat and apparently we were so understanding those rules and being able corsets, to take some control we had over like, all of that dude, we is had incredibly people valuable. Like it's an educational curve. And what do we do on these channels? We like to educate you while stuff. entertaining you. Which honestly is why I think this yeah. channel is so important hmm. for us to launch. There are so many lies and half-truths in the fashion industry that there needs to be someone out there to say, hey, this is right, this is wrong, this is what science We probably cut this. Also, you know, we're going to have a lot of fun because talking about fashion is weird. Like, this channel is already getting me this to pull a ballistic growing. head to death using a high heel. Yeah. Speed, it's also the know? channel where we're going to physically be testing the viability of female armor or how many t-shirts it takes well, to I stop he's, a bullet. He's There's from also New York. practical everyday stuff too on this South. channel. Do school uniforms <laughs> actually benefit <laughs> I, the students? Does it make I a difference whether or not you wash quickly, your legs in the shower? Gotta, That's the sort gotta, of stuff that you can find on this new channel. In fact, there are five new episodes that you can check out right after you finish this beast of an upload. I personally recommend starting with the killer heel episode because this episode's all about the birth of a killer. And while you're over there, consider subscribing. Subscribing. Okay, It'll do all of us guy, over here a huge favor. Because if we manage to get a million wrong. subscribers nope. by the end of the month, I'm proud of you, Matt. Top fashion you channel here channel. on YouTube. Show the world that looking smart can be even better than looking cool. So go ahead, enjoy Very your true. all day theory. Also, in the comments, let us and now, like with our logo complete, it's time to complete our other massive And we don't understand this timeline. He seems very. Where things are about to get. Yeah, before it pops. Very I, I, I think it's just a matter of he's he, popular. He he's just a, popular. He's a is big that channel. It? That's it. He's yeah, popular, okay. and people hate popular people. That's it. Like I, I honestly think that's all there is. Fair to enough. It. Huh. Because I mean, I mean, not honestly, I don't do YouTuber deep dives a lot of times, so I, I, I don't know say, who's problematic and who isn't. Think about and it this it's way, like, right? He's got 18 million subscribers. True. There are people true. that hate watch us regularly. There are people that hate that are hate watching this video right now. It's true. And we have like a hundred something thousand. Could you imagine the amount of hate watchers multiplied to that degree? 18 million. Right? Like yeah, it's inevitable. That's... You're gonna you're gonna have a cult of uh, just wow. a cult following. That's like 180 videos. times where we're at right yeah. now. Yeah. Cult cult. Get dark in a hurry. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. 
1983, business was booming with two whole restaurant franchises running, Fred Bear's Family Diner and the newly opened Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Together, William and Henry had been able to take the hybrid suit yeah. idea and make it into a <laughs> reality. They called rough. their new invention the Springlock was, Suit. And fittingly like enough, how it was William symbolic like of the partnership to between these two mm -hmm. men. A human suit as designed by William that could become a freestanding Henry-style <laughs> robot. <laughs> but because it was still new tech with kinks to work out, the rollout was limited. Restricted so only to the Fred Bear's Family Diner like location. It. All of this meant that William was busier than ever. He didn't have time to be a full-time parent, so he designed a nanny cam system where cameras and speakers were hidden throughout the neighborhood, as well as in his uh, youngest son's favorite toy, Psychic Friend Fred Bear. I mean, what? plushy Fred oh, Bear. But since oh. cameras just weren't that's enough to raise a kid, he also fuel. left childcare duties to his eldest oh. son, Michael. There was just oh, one problem just... with that. What? Michael was far from the best babysitter. He tormented his younger brother by jump-scaring him with a foxy mask and constantly left him behind. William watched nice. all oh of it from God. his cameras. Kids would this be kids. Tomorrow was another day, after all. I can Except relate. Michael's torment didn't stop. Bitter, I was the little brother. thoughts would run through Michael's mind. Why did he have to be the one to take care of this whining oh, crybaby like all the time? Myers, it just wasn't fair. It was time that he got even with his brother by playing the ultimate prank. A prank that just so happened to be on this crying child's birthday. He and his God, friends would take his scared damn. little brother and make him do the one thing that he was <gasps> terrified of doing. Getting close to the animatronics. That would be embarrassing for the kid that was such an embarrassment to him. His brother squirmed, screamed, kicked, and fought. But just as they were putting that oh small God. squirming boy up to Fred Bear's lips, the mouth snapped shut. The sensitive oh, spring locks inside the body shit. had been triggered oh by the boy's God. movements, and they'd immediately clamped down. The wriggling stopped. The boy went limp. It's like it was a just crocodile. A it was meant to be funny. The boy was taken to the hospital and was immediately given an IV. Flowers and pills filled the nightstand Holy next to his hospital bed. But the damage shit. was too severe. Flowers. He couldn't recover. As the younger brother's <laughs> consciousness began to fade, he could hear Michael's last words. A small and flimsy apology. But his father, Williams, through the voice of the Fredbear plush, were a firm and committed promise to a dying son. You're broken. I will put you back together. This would not oh be the oh end. No matter God. what, William's son would live again. Bro, it would just take time. Room, Time that right now he just didn't have. His yeah, he just had the plush. Flatlined as the boy faded into the inky unknown of the afterlife. In the aftermath of the tragedy, changes started happening around the restaurants. Bro, Kids were. Could you imagine your your eldest son? Like you leave him to babysit, yeah. and him and his friends bring your kid to <laughs> your creation and murder him. That's yeah. that. Uh, Afton seems like birthday. But Afton it, it seems was like joke. Yeah, it was joke. <laughs> Afton though seems like he has <laughs> such pride in his creations uh, that it, it, it he'd be proud. He like damn. I, man, I don't yeah, know if he have proud, pride. Like, and then, I I feel like he'd be unbothered in the sense of like, like that's your fault, not its fault. Yeah, I mean this is why you got a parent now required yeah. to wear security wristbands to prevent anyone from getting outside without parental permission. Any kid who approached the exit without permission would have to answer to the security puppet. A marionette on strings get back would fly the around on rails get across the restaurant to stop kids in their tracks. It was William's idea, inspired with by Michael constantly leaving the restaurant without his brother. In the wake of Fred Bear's spring lock failure, all the hybrid suits were getting retired, locked away at the nearby Freddy Fazbear location. It was yet another tough pill to swallow after all the hard work that he and Henry had put into them. William would eventually bury the boy's small body in a remote location out in the woods right alongside his drive into and out of work every day. The death of this little boy sent the family spiraling. His wife, crippled with grief, was so distraught that all she could do was sit and watch TV. But his son Michael was far worse. Complaining of seeing hallucinations of a golden bear standing outside of his window, the boy good, was so good, racked with good. guilt that he was convinced that he was being haunted by the ghost of his yeah, brother stuck inside the suit that took you his life. The him. suit's <laughs> three-toed feet digging into the wet earth. The words, it's me, ringing through Michael's ears. Some nights, Michael would even go so far as to break out of his room to check I just want to say, because I already know it's going to happen. All you Michael apologists, fuck you. Suck my dick. Yeah, I don't care. I don't, I don't give I don't a care. shit. All right. Oh, it was an accident. Well, it wasn't an accident. But he was tormenting nah, poor nah, Billy. Yeah, so nah, try fucking suck it. I had an older sister who made my life hell growing up. So it's like, no, like, fuck, fuck Michael. I know. Yep the gravesite and ensure that his brother was still there. As for William himself, he disappeared into his work and his drinks. Fair. Junior's, the local bar, wasn't far from his son's gravesite. He found himself yeah, going no, there more and more kid, frequently, spending longer and longer like, amounts of time one. there. The it's bar gave him a place to think. 
to remember, to reflect and stew on how Henry had stolen his idea for an animal-themed restaurant. How they'd cut his character you, out of the cartoon when everyone else was there. How Henry had humiliated him by buying him out of bankruptcy. And now? Now there was his son. Henry had taken his son from him. The robotic part was the part that failed, after all. William ordered one more drink, but it was one too many. The bar turned him out and told him to go home. But William did Drive home! Drunk and right? angry, William <laughs> raced back to the restaurant to give Henry a piece of his mind, Damn. only to find someone else waiting. Henry's daughter, Charlie, locked outside of the building, bullies laughing at her through the window. Fine, some other problem to fix. But then Afton got an idea. A beautifully he awful gonna murder idea. Them kids. This, this was his chance to get He's back at the man that had kids, humiliated bro. him what? all those years ago. Henry had killed his business, and now Henry's robotic suit had killed his son. It was time for William to do some killing of his own. Let Henry feel what it's like to have something you love get ripped away. Well, part Parties continued inside the walls of the pizzeria, William attacked Charlie in the back alley. And it felt good. He felt free. The years of resentment oh and bitterness trapped in his heart finally released in a moment of pure unapologetic evil. He would make Henry hurt like he hurts. <laughs> But yeah, damn, I can't be innocent, innocent, That's though. so fucked Dropped up. Charlie's lifeless body and drove home, forced to confront his family problems later that night, appalled, but also a little excited by I what he had the just bastard. done. Charlie's death would remain on the books as a random act of he violence. I know it was a kid, but I want that ass. About William, there was no physical evidence, nothing that could link him back to the crime. In the weeks that followed, Fred Bear's yeah, family diner anus. would close for good. Two high-profile deaths around the restaurant with two grieving owners in such a short period of time was just too much bad press to handle. Besides, Freddy Fazbear's was still open, and it was the newer restaurant anyway. All the equipment from the diner, including the old yellow suits and security puppet, would get retired to that location, and there they would sit for two uneventful years. The rest of 1983 and 1984 were spent quietly grieving. Freddy Fazbear's Pizza and the new cast of characters were a hit. Tragic memories of their yellow predecessors quickly faded. Afton kept a low profile and right. buried himself in work and research, quickly reaching Henry's level of engineering and even surpassing him. And while Henry slowed Damn. down to grieve, Afton kept going, even starting his own company, Afton Robotics, for all those pet projects that were a little bit too experimental for the regular operations of the pizzeria. The first of these experimental projects was a secret workshop under his house, a veritable <laughs> bunker, which allowed him to work while still Yo, monitoring his kids via crazy. hidden security yeah, cameras. Fuck that, bro. One, nine, oh, eight, hell three. No. A passcode that served as a constant reminder of why the cameras were so important, why he was down there in the first place. This was all to fulfill the promise that Is he had made to his son, game, right? Though? I will put you back I'm together. So. This was for him. Him. All for him, right? But cameras weren't enough. He needed to solve the runaway Michael problem. Wait, he I've had to keep room, him in the house. He couldn't have another one of his kids wind up dead inside of an animatronic suit. So why not run a little experiment on Michael? You see, all this work with Henry had gotten Afton to start learning more about life, robots, I mean, the human mind, kill his and what a kid, fallible you know? machine we as humans were. Yeah, Our reality is so like... easy to manipulate with a few sensory deceptions. Deceptions like sound. With just he... a few sounds, he had discovered that he could alter a person's vision. He could transform blank, he already smooth, put the fatherhood robots. of his youngest son on his oldest son, and now he's just like treating his oldest son as the as yeah, the experiment. experiment. Now that's just wild. Well, bro, wow. my, my man's got a way of thinking that I cannot <laughs> comprehend. <laughs> like into lumbering, twisted nightmares. Oh nightmares far yep. scarier than he could create with actual materials. Right they would Dude, appear like organic, a Mortal Kombat rotting, character. putrid, and terrifying. These would be his means Yo, of keeping put, his son Michael in the Freddy house Fazbear where he belonged. Mortal was it extreme? Kombat, you Maybe. Coward. But then again, this was the boy who had killed his son. He would make him sorry. And so Michael would grow up not only dealing with the memories of his own guilt, the hospital room, the pills, the flowers, the death of his brother, but also facing literal nightmares. Illusions created by sound. Michael would never forget these either. Years later, as a security guard, he would still draw pictures of them inside of his logbook. But all of these extra projects meant that his home life suffered even more. He was an absent father and a non-existent husband, leaving his wife cold and alone. Why do you Yo, she's hide inside she? your walls oh, God, when no. there is music in my halls? All I see is an empty That's... room. No. No more no. joy, an empty tune. If you woke up and despite her repeated that, demands that he leave his office shit. and engage uh, with the family, he refused time shit, um, and time again. Jumped out of her no choice but to leave. You burned down my house. You call that a house? It was like a morgue in there. You need to see your son. The baby isn't mine. Well, how's this? 
I'm keeping the diamond ring. And through it all, there was one lingering feeling. Okay. William wasn't done. He had gotten a taste of what it felt like to be unleashed. What it felt like to be free. Charlie's murder had unlocked something in him. And he wanted more. June 26th, 1985. Putting on the golden bonnie suit, he lured children one by one to the back room of the pizzeria when no one was looking. At first, he was cautious. He would lure them with promises of cake and cookies. He told I mean, them that their dog had died. He would ask for help with homework. Susie was the first. You never truly forget get your first. With Susie. <laughs> I have seen everything. But where oh, to hide God. the bodies? He couldn't sneak out. Someone would see him. He had to hide them in a place where they'd never be found and where they'd never leave the building. They had to be stuffed. Stuffed inside of the suits. No one maintained those things anyway except for him. And so Susie would I go into so Chica. Fritz, how, like, Jeremy, and Gabriel would come. Yeah, that's what I was just thinking since, too, the smell. Since the movie, this has bothered me. Yeah. How did nobody smell? the rotting corpses like i always Mate. just kind of assumed like based on, like after the movie I, I just assumed that like he did that after you know what i mean like it had already closed right. and Maybe they got a charcoal inside to, to to kill the smell i guess come next but it was easy it was too fluid. easy and with each little life he snuffed out his lies got bigger their house was burning they're just being kidnapped until the last one where all pretense was off he let himself get violent too violent i'll just wait for him after school throw a bag over his head hit him with a shovel and drag him into the back of my car the body of cassidy oh was far more God. bloody and broken than any of the others he'd let himself what? go too far that one that one he shouldn't have killed with no more active animatronics left he shoved the body into the one suit that remained backstage stage the long forgotten yellow fred bear now broken and discolored with age broken like cassidy was broken like his son was broken newspapers reported on this disappearance naming the whole thing the missing children's incident police would even charge william with the crimes after finding security there. footage of the golden mascot suit luring kids to the back but they couldn't convict him they had no bodies and his face had been hidden behind the mascot suit the entire time what they had was God, circumstantial so at best and so he walked away a free man but henry knew the truth. In these murders, he saw his daughter Charlie all over again. So he threw Afton out of the company and shuttered the doors to the old pizzeria. Henry would keep works? the franchise quiet for that? two years. This would not happen again. I this could this. not happen again. How could he, well, he protect the like, kids? You know, Finally, he developed a solution. So he, he would implement an even more extreme security system in the form of new animatronics. Toy animatronics. Inspired by the toys that they had been selling years ago. But these guys, these were special. They were a new breed of robot with facial recognition ability. But most importantly, what? they're all tied into some kind of criminal database so they can detect a predator a mile away. All the original animatronics oh. now withered I mean, with age were moved like to the new location. Smart, yeah, with a plan in place, maybe? it was time to if try once more. The year was 1987 and the new and improved Freddy Fazbear's Pizza was making headlines in local newspapers. Headlines that just so happened to catch the attention of William Afton. Freddy's was back? And without him? That yeah, was his idea. His He's character. Father, Henry father. was, yet again, trying to cut him out of the picture. Yeah. No. As long as these restaurants stayed open, William would always He'd come back. His then kid. he noticed the phone I mean, number to apply like... at the bottom of the article. $100 a week to apply call. Afton would go back. Not as an owner or co-founder. He would go back in the one place that they would least suspect him. A lowly day shift security guard. And there it was. Buried in the back of parts and services mixed in with the old withered animatronic. I, do, do you think what? that that would work? I mean, I guess it would. Like, the original owner, like, and people just didn't notice who he was. Like, I guess Undercover I Boss mean, exists, I mean, but... Like, you know, think of an awful company, and do you know the face of the CEO, or the boss, or or anyone no. like that? But but isn't, but isn't what's-his-name there? Like, I understand that the line-level employee is not knowing. But like, if this dude was your partner, like, is he just never? No, going I'm into assuming. The no, I'm assuming Henry had like his own workshop and stuff. Oh, like he didn't. Yeah, he didn't actually right. work you out of the back right. of the yeah. restaurant, right? Like it's true, it's... true, true. Next was the golden rabbit. With the yellow security badge still on his chest, he used his crank to pull open the spring locks. It was time for Bonnie to give an encore performance. Someone used one Damn. of the suits. We had a spare in the back, a yellow one. Someone used it. Now none of them are acting right. Uh, from what I understand, the building is on lockdown. No one is allowed in or out. You know, especially concerning any previous employees. When we get it all sorted out, we may move you to the day shift. 
a position just became available. 1987, five more kids. He didn't know what felt better, getting back into the suit after two long years of waiting, or knowing how devastating this would be to Henry the next morning. He didn't even try to hide his crime this time, just meant more blood on Henry's hands. He'd failed to protect the kids again. The restaurant had only been open for a few weeks, but William was sure that this would get it to close. Good, if he couldn't have Freddy's, no one would. Whenever a new pizzeria opened, he would be there. But as he sat in his bunker, something else started to linger in William's mind. He had seen something strange. The old withered animatronics, they had been wandering around the building, spurred on by the puppet. It was almost like those old robots were trying to save the kids. Save them? They couldn't, obviously, Weird. but still, how were they moving? It was almost like they had been given life somehow. Did he have something to do with that? The following day, the news would report a security guard so getting crazy, bitten you're not by sure one of the animatronics during that? the day shift. Right. Was that bite meant for... For him? William's curiosity was stronger now than his bloodlust. He had to learn more, but how? There was no way he'd ever be able to get inside another Freddy's pizzeria. Heck, there was practically no way a Freddy's would ever open again. He needed to create something new, something brand new. He needed to create his own pizzeria. Of course. Due to the massive success, I love that all this is so surrounding like a, 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 a children's pizza. Like, it was clear that the stage was pizzeria Well, dude, you heard it's, it after the movie, and, and it's like, yeah. I, I, who knows? Maybe it isn't related, but like. Uh -huh. Chuck E. Cheese announced they're getting rid of the animatronics, and they they announced that like a week after the movie came out, which is hilarious. And it's like I don't know if if that type of decision w would be made that quickly, but right? I don't know, man. The timing is they're like, oh, quick, quick, get rid the of them. They're, they're gonna check the animatronics. Sus. We can't, we can't have that. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, this theory, like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> no pun intended for another contender in children's Somebody entertainment. This, this Circus CEO, Babies like, Pizza rid of them. World. Get this, rid of them now. This would be the place where he could continue his work. No longer just murdering, experimenting. He needed more kids, and he needed them alive. And knowing that he couldn't show his face on the restaurant floor, he needed just... a way of remotely capturing his victims and preserving them for his work. With that goal in mind, he designed a new breed of animatronic. Their endoskeletons fluid and flexible. He equipped them with sound lores that could mimic voices. They could isolate children. They could incapacitate and contain them with zero win direct windigos. input from him. Like... It was brilliant. He was brilliant. Far beyond the simple bars and wires of Henry's designs. And the characters he chose for this were Henry, uniquely his. Bitch. His new roster wasn't going to be tainted by Henry's disgusting barnyard bird. Instead, it was back to his characters, his creations. Freddy, Bonnie, Foxy. As well as two special ones. The first, Ballora, was an homage to the woman who left him. Now, she Damn. would never leave him again. The second, the titular baby was designed with his baby in mind, oh. Elizabeth, his youngest child. She would oh. always be daddy's little girl, the one that listened to him, the one that obeyed until the day that she didn't. Daddy, why Wait. won't you let me play with her? She's so Was that the girl's name shiny. in the movie? Didn't you I make her so? just for me? <laughs> The day before a Circus Baby's Pizza World opened, she disobeyed. She didn't listen. Left alone with Baby, she got too close. The animatronic ripped in half and swallowed her whole. A scared, God confused damn. child fading into eternal darkness. By the time Afton found her, it was too late. She was gone. He immediately canceled the launch of Circus Babies under the guise of a gas leak. But wait, as he sat there at the foot of the stage, he noticed that something was different. The eye color of the robot had changed. Baby had been built with blue eyes, but now they were emerald green, the same color as Elizabeth's. Was she in there? Could this all be connected to the free-moving animatronics that he had seen at Freddy's? He had to know more. His mourning turned to excitement. He had to return to where it all started. This dude 1993. Is pathetic. Yeah. This place was pathetic. Henry and the clearly fact tried that to he reopen keeps getting away time. with all this is wild. Yeah, I mean, it's been right. going on for like a fucking decade at this point. Like, bruh. You're not gonna... Alright, one of his kids died. Uh, his partner kids died. Another kid died. Another set of kids died. Then it's five like, more kids died. All at this play. Hmm. Like, god damn, dude. It's I just mean, bad luck, dude. It's the 80s, yeah. dude. I'm it's just you, really dude. bad luck. Like, like, they didn't have that tech they do now. Now you he walked under a ladder. Shit. Back then, dude, serial killers galore. And with those old original animatronics from so long ago, but William's damage to the brand had been permanent. These things stank of death. They hadn't been washed in decades. But even if they had, nothing could wash away the stink of murder that haunted these halls. One night, then another, then another. William repeatedly snuck into the old, broken restaurant to lure the living animatronics to him. One by one dismantling them. Robbing them of their endoskeletons. The metal had to be the secret. It had to contain the remnants of life itself. But he had to 
to know for sure. Leaping out of a room that was invisible to the animatronics programming, he dragged the oversized robotic skeletons back to his underground workshop. Back to where Circus Baby watched on with glowing, curious eyes. Eyes that somehow felt no. alive. Not knowing what else to do, no. William melted the robotic parts down. Five animatronic endoskeletons reduced down to one silvery puddle of goo. Could he transfer this living metal to his own creations? He had to try. He picked up a syringe and filled it with the molten metal and injected the goo into Funtime Freddy's twisted, wiry endoskeleton. And suddenly, oh, the coils like came to life. Like snakes shit. writhing in a pile, what had once been cold, lifeless metal moved and jolted on its own. He'd done it! He had unlocked the secret to life itself. Except something was clearly wrong. The movements were erratic. They were violent, angry. Baby didn't act you, this way. She had been calm, collected. This was clearly something else. Something mindless and frantic. Perhaps by mixing the souls and then portioning them out, he had created incomplete beasts. He would need to keep testing he to truly understand soup. it. He needed more <laughs> he of this remnant. Soup. As he searched the old pizzeria one more time for any remaining scraps of metal, the ghosts attacked. His past victims come to collect their due, all led by Cassidy. The five <laughs> lined up and blocked the door, and Afton's mind Bro, reeled. So the scientific funny. implications of this were incredible. Ghosts, real ghosts that he could see all standing against him. But what could they do? What couldn't they do? He panicked as Cassidy approached. How do you stop something that's already dead? Maybe with the thing that resulted in their death in the first place. He would get into his suit like old times. He would regain his power over them just like the day that they died. He was the genius. He was the one in the suit. He was the one in charge. The spring lock snapped into place. Maybe it was his frantic movements. Maybe it was the leaky abandoned restaurant. Maybe it was just fate coming to collect its due. He didn't know. The only thing he did know was that his brain was suddenly filled with searing white hot pain as hundreds of metallic pins and gears stabbed into his body from all sides. All he could do was collapse, blood slowly oozing out of the suit and pooling onto the floor around him. God. It couldn't end like this. It wouldn't end like this. His work was unfinished. I mean, Unable to move, his only option was to survive. Live yeah, to right. keep living. It took days lying in his own blood, but eventually someone found him. A security guard making a normal report. When he saw the animatronics torn apart in the middle of the party room floor, it caused him to file an immediate report of a break-in. An owner would have to come in and claim the damage. And who else would it be other than Henry? Hope jumped in Afton's heart. Henry would see him. They were partners, after all. He would be the one to help save him, to get him out of this suit, yeah. to relieve him from this tremendous pain. Henry entered the secret room. His eyes fell on Afton sitting there in the pool of red and Henry saying nothing turned and walked oh away. damn <laughs> Henry that due to budget restrictions the previously mentioned safe rooms are being sealed at most locations including this one nothing is being taken out beforehand so if you left anything inside then it's your own fault management also requests that this room not be mentioned to family friends or insurance representative. And so there Afton would sit, hanging That's, on for 30 right. years, trapped you behind know, the see, walls be a point with an iron play. will that really, refused I don't to be a part die. Of this, end of going this on. part. I say this part because it's not officially the end of the Afton era just yet, but this just felt like a really solid stopping point, and the episode has gone on forever. Okay, so most of this is things that we already knew, stuff that's been established and re-established time and time again by the games. That said, there are two things that I absolutely have to address. The first and biggest is the placement of sister location. Location, or more specifically, Elizabeth's death. To me, evidence in game seems to suggest that it was meant to come before the crying child's death in 1983. The biggest clue to this is that the crying child saw something. Remember what you saw is the phrase that's repeated over and over again by psychic friend Fredbear, aka William Afton speaking through a walkie-talkie in the Fredbear plushie's stomach. But what did he see? Well, I think we can tell based on how the nightmare animatronics are visualized. They have this mouths so in disturbing. their stomachs, just like baby ripping in half at the ways to swallow a kid. There's also the empty girl's room, one presumably left behind by a dead sister. And lastly, it explains why fuck? he's scared and more specifically why Afton wants him scared. He needs his kids to stay away from the There's animatronics. This much he doesn't the want game? them Bro, getting too close because the last time eight. one of his kids There's got too parts. close to a robot, his daughter died. That's then why he sets up the nightmares, to scare both Mike and the crying child away from the animatronics from that point forward. That's why books like the character encyclopedia outright what suggest that we play as the crying child in FNAF 
before. That's why he has a nanny cam following the crying child everywhere, so he can keep tabs on his kids when they're out of his sight. He can't let another Elizabeth situation happen. The death of Elizabeth also gives William Afton extra motivation for killing. He's a grieving father. His daughter was taken away from him, so Charlie should die as well. He's lashing out at the world after losing his kids. And again, we know that at least one of his children had to have died prior to Charlie's death, based on the mound of dirt that we see in Midnight Motorist. It also allows circus There's babies Midnight to Motorist. open and close earlier in the timeline, which is how you wind up with Funtime Foxy appearing as Mangle in the FNAF 2 location. Basically, Elizabeth dying first has everything it needs to fit, except for the most important thing, the murder weapon. Why would Afton be building an animatronic with a giant claw on its stomach so early in the timeline? At this point, he just has no motive. It just doesn't make sense prior to 1983. At this point in the story, he hasn't killed anyone, and we know for a fact that the missing children's incident is 1985. There's so Elizabeth's books. death coming Bro, before man, any dude, of those events price, just doesn't deep. work. Hence why I placed it where I did yeah, in the narrative like... timeline. Afton's death here is also a bit tricky. We know that he returned to the FNAF 1 location to break down the original animatronics in order to harvest their remnant. We know that he melts down five things to become one <laughs> thing. Candy Cadet makes aesthetic. that very yeah, clear. Yeah, no. So the five things are the five endoskeletons from the various the 80s, animatronics. You know? That would be totally it. fine if it weren't for one huge problem. On his fifth visit to the pizzeria, Afton gets springlocked. So either the five becoming one starts in 1993, but then finishes 30 years later when he re-emerges from the wall to add the last endoskeleton to his pile, or he's had himself some reason to return Fucking to the original location after too. harvesting all the stuff that he can. It's not ideal, but it's the one angle that makes the most sense. And with that, this next chapter comes to a close, thereby leaving us with five more games to cover and another 40 plus years of Fazbear history to recap. Ooh, when you put it that way, something tells me that this might balloon into four parts. Ugh, we'll see. Anyway, until then, my Faz heads, Narrator. congratulations, you've made it through a massive upload. And hey, if you are still looking for more to watch, then check out the other five brand new awesome theories over on our new sister location, oh Style Theory. Well, this thing what, literally launched sir, today, so this is your chance to be one Ready of the to first watch. people to ever subscribe. Bitch. Time. So it's coming. Thank you so much for your support. Thank Let's you for tell YouTube attention, that this is a channel yeah. that is worthwhile yeah, that and worth sharing like. across the platform. So, I have no so doubt it's if you keep an open that the daughter died before the brother killed his brother. That's what it sounds like. That's yeah. That's that's the feeling I got from it. it by is, I don't know what midnight. That's why the kid is crying is underneath well, the thing. Like, and he's afraid of the animatronic. So there's right? like. 20 million games and then books there's as well books, so games, i but, yeah there's a lot but, so before I mean, well, we that's do the thing too this is a theory yeah. right so like this isn't even like he doesn't even technically know if this is all accurate right right uh True. so I, I i do want to ask like all of us are like one piece lovers and stuff like that mm -hmm. we we carry like a pretty strong faith in like oda knows what he's doing with a story that big uh is it the same kind of thing community wise this is the question to the audience is it the same kind of thing community wise? Like, do you guys trust the person writing the books, making the games that they know what they're doing? Or does it feel like they're kind of flying by the seat of their pants? Because like, this is insane. Like, this yeah, is a is lot. It is crazy that it's um, this deep. And, and, I, and I know they've been out like, uh, what, 10, 15 years at this time. point. So yeah. there's been yeah, like no, time to plan and while, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but no, like, is there like faith in that? Like, and, and this isn't a shot against him. This is actually a genuine question. Like, do you guys believe in like his ability to craft this in like a cohesive way that it's going to make sense in the end? Because I mean, at this point, like, do they have animatronic like an AI sentient esque fucking animals, uh, or or <laughs> you know, it's it's literally like, it is this man going to invent time travel? Like, is is Yo, is that so. is that like the next step? Like, because it say, seems if like time it. travel <laughs> happens, you are on. Super I mean, he, he melted down living soul metal. Like, yeah, yeah, but yeah, time travels true. a bit too far. Yeah, like I'm Same. just like, bro, what, what is, what is next in this man's fucking portfolio? I don't know, but we'll find out. The next yeah. game theory. I like the way mm. you said that. Bye, Billy. Be the joy. Bye.